the German language learning magazine Deutsch Perfekt and together with Finn Tieber we're bringing you today 10 ways to make the internet your German language theme park. So have you ever wondered that you might be spending too much time on the internet? Well we all have and honestly not only during lockdown but of course even more so during lockdown. So while in many parts of the world right now it's summertime and there are more than 30 degrees outside uh, it might lure you uh, into going outside spending more time with your friends well actually last month we had the idea to bring you some learning tips um, for um, improving your German giving you that German boost uh, while being outside and being active out there right now I want to give you learning tips what you can do online in order to improve your German but first off, let me explain to you who Fintiba and Deutsch Perfect is, and after that, you will get your le language learning advice. So, uh, Fintiba has been ensuring a seamless start to international students for when they try to get to Germany and when they are getting to Germany, and even when they are there, they take care of you international students. As Deutsch Perfect, we are delivering 14 times a year language learning content and journalistic content to learners of the German language. That is a magazine and if you want to you can opt in for an exercise book Deutsch Perfect Plus. And we also have a CD that comes with it and for your favorite teacher of your class there's also this Deutsch Perfect im Unterricht that maps out uh, classes for teachers in order to deliver to students using our materials. So um, I already explained to you our idea of the summer learning tips. Here you see a barebone um, summer learning tips cover. Of course, it does not look like that. It looks like this and you can even get it in stores right now. Well, one thing I have to tell you, it's already towards the end of its shelf cycle, which means it will be in shelves in Germany at least for roughly a week from now only and uh, then we will change but I will explain to you where you can get it for example at those bigger newspaper stores größere Bahnhof kiosks or anything that is within the scale of that in Germany Austria or Switzerland and in other countries you can also get it in newspaper stores at least the ones that also have an international press section or something for language learners select bookstores rather bigger bookstores or you just go and ask for that. In any case, if you cannot encounter Deutsch Perfect in a store in your country, you can always get it as a printed copy delivered to you. So just order that from our website deutschperfect.com or you get a digital copy right away the moment you download it and then you have it as a digital copy, always the day of release. Anyways, if you um, decide to get a, a printed copy, delivery times and also the times uh, until a shop gets the latest issue uh, that might vary from the times that German kiosks get the latest one. So telling you this I just wanted to point out that maybe you will not find this issue in a week's time uh, in a German um, station uh, paper store because it might have changed to our nice little friend um, the bird on the Hamburg cover which will be out um, maybe by the time of next Wednesday. Uh, so from that issue we will go to the next one Deutsch Perfect 10 in the year 2020 and that will be on Hamburg mostly uh, which is also very exciting. But uh, telling you more about Fintiba uh, they've been there since 2016 and have already helped people from 170 countries. Maybe you're one of them or your friend uh, will be one of them if you um, recommend Fintiba. I have some tailor-made online solutions now going on and also help for people who are not yet in Germany uh, but want to study there eventually or who are on the way there and already there. So um, their services um, are very hands-on, will get, we'll get you practical help, bureaucratic help and uh, stuff concerning bank accounts for example. 
Right now, they also have their Q&A going, which is a series of videos. And maybe you can find that also on YouTube and uh, find some helpful information for you there. That being said, that is us. And now I want to show you 10 ways to make the internet your German language theme park. So first off, what am I going to deliver to you is actually 10 interactive ways where you can engage with the internet in more ways than just passively reading through stuff and flicking through nice memes. I know you all love uh, funny memes and there are tons of German funny memes as well, but I'm sure um, some of you already know these. So maybe if you do, just um, drop them in the chat box to let others know about your favorite German uh, blogs, Instagram accounts, TikToks, YouTubes, Facebook, whatever, funny things or f things you just like sharing and um, little things that give you a German input every day. That's something I'm not giving you today. I have a treasure box full of that, but I want to take more of a productive learning approach so that uh, you guys will actually use the language if you decide to do so and um, not have it much as a Netflix buffet where you just lean back and consume, but you actually produce language, write stuff, post things, or even um, capture a video of yourself, uh, forward things, comment, um, tell about your life and your experience, and use the internet very much within the idea of Web 2.0. So let's start. With every advice I'm giving you, you can always adapt it to your level. And for this very first one, I explain to you how you can do that. So let's start with one thing I encountered in our last issue. My colleague wrote a wonderful text on Corona language. Those are words that just come up during the pandemic and went viral in German media. For example, Besuchsverbot, um, index patient and lockdown. And I was curious to know, well, is that just a corona phenomenon or have they been around for longer and how often were they used in German media? So I tried a very nice tool that is always there for you to explore your language and the German language with, and that is Ngram from Google. So if you're tuning in from the People's Republic of China, for example, you might not always have access to Google products. You can also use a site called www.dvds.de. And they have a different thing also that's also accessible from uh, mainland China, for example. So there I searched for um, German words, Besuchsverbot, Index, Patient, Lockdown, and they have been around for quite a while. And they've also had their peaks and their lows throughout the uh, decades. That was interesting to know. Of course, within one or two years time, you will also be able to set that to 2020 and you will see how that goes up there. Um, so that might not be Neues Deutsch after all, but still there are new words coming and Deutsch Perfect always has a few articles online that you can read there for free. And a good starting point might be for intermediate learners of B1 levels or the B levels in general to read that article. And it's funny, it's about new words that come up with technology like um, an Excel usage and uh, how they will integrate in a German language. You can learn more about that and then maybe think of yourself of your web activities, computer activities. Can I actually express that in German? Maybe you can, because it's always nice and creative to try using your actual word and um, internet vocabulary and Germanize it. Just Google that and you will find your words actually make sense, at least to the newer generation of German. Advanced learners can try to find actual articles from the recent weeks that contain these words around the corona speak. Corona kilos, infodemie, hustenhygiene, that's just a few examples of them. And if you practice with those articles, well, then you're already on the C level, I guess. But uh, on this article here, we name a few more. 
So if you want to start with that, um, go ahead. All the tips I'm giving you today take uh, the magazine as a vantage point and try to elevate the experience you can have with that to more of an augmented digital level and uh, give you a stimulus to interact if you want so. So also the second one stems from one of those words mentioned here and that's Corona Frisur, the Corona hairstyle. And my idea was, so why not find a YouTube tutorial in German that explains to you how you can cut your hair. So in the weeks of March and April this year, more and more people were actually um, looking on YouTube, wie schneide ich mir die Haare Corona? I advise you to do that and approach it in a very productive way in order to get the most out of this YouTube tutorial, uh, even if, if it might not be the best haircut. Good approach. First, prepare a list of expected vocabulary and uh, just find it in your German textbooks, useful words for that specific context of cutting one's hair. Grab a bunch of realia. So what is realia? Um, teachers might know that, but uh, you might not come across that word. Realia are just the real things uh, that carry a meaning. So um, if you have a glass and you take an action or glass, put a post-it on it, then you uh, write the German word of it on it, which is, which is also glass. Um, then you use the realia as a learning concept. But just prepare all the stuff you might need for cutting your hair in order to um, have the word in front of you already. It's good to have this haptic approach. Then after, watch the tutorial with and without sound. When you watch it without sound, just try to imagine German sentences that fit that moment on the images that are shown. And also, if there are subtitles, watch it with and without subtitles. Combining uh, textual levels, visuals, the things you hear and your pre-knowledge of vocabulary um, will give you so much that the tutorial experience will be a rich one. And maybe you can post the YouTube link in one of your social medias and write something in German. So in any case, use German when you share your experience with those interactive videos. And also use German when you post your hairstyle. Please, I'm curious to know. The third one uh, is an idea um, that is actually monthly in our lovely magazine. And we have curious place names in Germany, Austria, and Switzerland. And this one, Schwarz Indian, is actually a place name of a little village in Austria. And uh, my idea was, so you might not have been to Schwarz Indian, actually it's very small. And besides the name, um, I personally have not heard much about it, but there's a lot more to read in the magazine. You can create your own maps, did you know that? So that is something I found on Google Maps. It's mymaps.google.com. I'm sure for mainland Chinese people, there's a Baidu alternative uh, for that. And everyone else can just Google and um, map out the places they've been to create their own Germany, their own Austria and Switzerland, and then share it with the world. So you can color in provinces where you've been, for example, as I did in here, which are all the provinces in Germany, or you can just um, drop little pins on a map of a city, uh, your favorite places, your hangouts, your recommendations, or touristic places, as I did in here with a few places in Berlin. And just sharing a map is um, sharing your own individual idea of a city and what it means to you or of a country, uh, the places where you've been to. I always love to do that when I was traveling myself. I actually used to have a physical map out there, but yeah, sharing with the uh, online world, the best way, I guess, is that my maps feature you can use. And of course, when you post about that, try to use German. People will like to see your recommendations. The next one is inspired by one of the many nice illustrations of our magazine, and that's Frank here. So when my colleague and I envisioned an idea of, okay, what can be good storytelling moment 
for that grammar topic in here, we came up with that idea, and it is also um, a nice sentence, Frank war eingeschlafen before the film began. Well, I actually um, recognized that moment. I f always felt so embarrassed when my parents fell asleep uh, in the cinema before even the film began. <laughs> but they usually did. Uh, so pictures can tell you stories, and that's my next tip for you. Bilder erzählen Geschichten. First off, create a meme. Describe a funny picture, one you own yourself, or take it from the web, for example, unsplash.com. Uh, that is just one uh, website where I know I can use that, and I just credit that, but um, if I don't have anything funnier in my own uh, photos, I can use that. And here I made uh, a little meme. Ich hatte kurz nicht aufgepasst und schon war ich game over. So it also carries the grammar featured in here, it's called Plusquam Perfect, which is a good storytelling grammar and um, makes that moment clearer to you of when things happen before, because it gives you a, a level of pre-past in your storytelling. But yeah, always combine your visual storytelling with German captures. And if you want to uh, capture a specific moment, it's always good to have a grammar boost beforehand. So make sure to check out that link. It will let you practice when and as. And that's an offer from Deutsch Perfect we have. Um, in any case, uh, whatever you share, having your first own German meme might be fun to you. And I know you all are very able with the internet with Instagram, TikTok and so on. So I'm curious to see what you have. You can always place your accounts in the chat right now if you want to share that. And the more you actually dare using German also online, just approach it in a fun way. Don't worry too much about uh, the language and the easier it will be for you to have fun with the language and maybe also interact and chat a little with people. All the links that I have in here I will also have in the description box below the video for you gather. Number five, that's one more maybe for the advanced level. And of course, finding a job in Germany um, is always easier when you have a good level of German. But I want to put you on a web quest that is a little quest where you have an objective to, to reach more knowledge through the internet and you just go through the internet and find resources on various sites. So what is that web quest? Be a Sprachdetektiv für Jobangebote. Those job offers can be found on Indeed, Xing, LinkedIn or other websites where you find jobs usually, but those are a few resources that Germans like to use. And why did I come up with that web quest? Well, actually, it is quite a skill to distinguish the language of temp agency posts and those of direct posts um, where you get the job directly at a company. So temp agencies will be the intermediary where you are hired by them and then they lend you to a company where you actually work. Uh, they both come with advantages and disadvantages. You can find more about that also here in our magazine. Um, but you might be curious about how can I spot a placement on the internet and know if it comes from a temp agency or it comes from a company directly and who will be my boss. I have some great anecdotes of friends who thought they uh, might be hired at uh, that company directly and when they went to the interview they were of course always telling oh my god I've always wanted to work with you it's been my dream for ages to be um, part of human resolutions and um, I've studied your company for ages until that temp agent stopped him and said well you're not gonna work here for us we are temp agency so it's always good to know I uh, have uh, the instructions here for your web quest comparing the language of the both offers and acquiring uh, more knowledge on what is a typical language for each type of them and um, soon you'll be a pro in uh, finding the job offer that suits you best be that directly at a company or maybe at a temp agency whatever you choose
Nummer 6, die Wortmonster. So, let's play a little Pokémon, shall we? German has word monsters, we all know. Those are the very curious words, as you can see in that picture here. You see that little container of tea leaves inside the teacup? That's a T-I. And for anyone who's dyslexic, it's uh, always difficult if that is not hyphenated, but it actually exists in two versions. Now, you have T-I hyphenated, and you have T-I, which is the same word, but uh, is a word monster for some. So we just envision them as two battling Pokemon and we will let them compete. How are we going to do that? And pick a search engine, for example Google, and type the word T-I hyphenated once and see how many hits you get. And then type it again without uh, the Bindestrich and um, you will see, hmm, what is more popular? What do German websites use more? And that's the winner of that little battle. So if you want to know more about word monsters, of course there is um, an article on that in our magazine. And um, that is this one here. There are more examples. You can try them out on the internet, see what gets more hits. Um, also, curious to know, do people like the hyphenated words or do they prefer the weird monsters? Sometimes they uh, prefer the weird monsters, but to tell you one thing for TI, they prefer the hyphenated one. All right, <laughs> here we see a nice fella who's uh, during quarantine time maybe producing his own tutorial video. We don't know. But let's start off with a good phrase, heute lernen wir wie. Maybe you have some things to teach, a good recipe of your country or a German recipe uh, that you've tried before and they actually tasted nice. You want to share that with others. So my advice is find a recipe, for example on chefkoch.de and having that first recipe resource already in German will prepare you very well for using that language in your own tutorial video once you produce that. So you will get the ingredient list and you will also get some useful verbs and instructions within the recipe in there. Um, of course, copying a recipe, making it identical from Chef Koch is not the nicest thing. Give it your own little twist or maybe mix in some of your culture ingredients to uh, the stuff you're going to make. So it's a, um, a your own version of a German recipe. What I like doing is um, sharing recipes, taking a photo of it, and of course you can have that on your Instagram story, for example, and then um, people can get to know the uh, recipe. What we do almost uh, more than every month is uh, we make a map of um, one word, and here just by coincidence, it was a German dish, mashed potatoes, and show how many variations of that word even exist. Um, there are so many, Kartoffelbrei is a common one, but you also have Püree, Stampf, and so on. Yeah. There are so many variations of that word, and this is how I came across, okay, it's actually quite a complex dish, seeing that everyone has a different name for it. But making it is not that hard. So if you want to start off with an easy dish, just pick Kartoffelbrei or Erdäpfelbrei, Püree, whatever you name it. Find it on Chefkoch or another German recipe website and then make your tutorial. Good approach as always. Make a vocabulary list, have your realia ready, all the ingredients, all the items. And then when you produce that video, you can decide for yourself. Do I speak live or record it? Um, and if I record it, I can still decide to dub it afterwards and have a German text that I just read from a written script and have it be played over the video. Or you can decide to add subtitles if you want to and um, have them written in German. Whatever you do, use the German language. Have fun on that online theme park. The next one 
is inspired by uh, a few moments in the magazine where we showed musicians, German musicians, and also um, there is an interview with a musician who actually tells about her time during Corona. So while she herself is not the biggest fan of online concerts, um, she tells that um, it's a loss in revenue for her. And of course, um, streaming music is not the thing that makes musicians rich, especially the smaller ones. But this advice for me to you is just to um, compile your own playlist or find a playlist on the streaming um, platforms because they just offer most of the music and it's easy to search and find it there. So for example, you type Deutsch Pop or Deutsch Rap or the best in Deutsch Sprachigen songs uh, in uh, either Spotify, Apple Music, uh, whatever you use, Deezer, YouTube, you name it. And, and there you find German music. Here, for example, I picked the uh, playlist Die Besten Deutschsprachigen Songs, Tonspion, just because I recognize a few songs in there. And then it was on Spotify. Uh, it was nice for me uh, to, you know, just have a throwback moment from back in the day when they used to play those German songs. And with German music and speaking about it, posting about it, sharing your experience, you will learn and improve your German. I'm sure about that. The next one was inspired by our travel tips, which I'm always happy to see them because they give me inspiration to travel in Germany, Austria or Switzerland. So here we have Alex Gletscher and Wismar, a place in Germany, and Kitzbühler Alpen in Austria. And whatever you want to know more about, pick a place in those countries and roam the German internet around it. So your ultimate travel web quest would be gather as much information as you can get in German on a place within the German speaking world. It can be one of those. Um, personally, I've never been to Wismar. I'd love to visit. That's also the one you can see here on the picture. It uh, looks lovely, doesn't it? But I don't know much about it. So before traveling there, and um, I can travel there either directly, I'm in Germany right now, or I can travel there through the internet, uh, have a little Google Maps walk in there. I would prepare myself with some more information on that place. So. Browse the German web for information, collect facts and visuals and make your own little portfolio uh, within that web quest where you have um, yeah, your own little wiki on that place, right? And then you can walk the streets on Google Maps and maybe you recognize something from the things you've read and um, can share your experience with that. We're coming to our last tip. And that's also actually a travel tip because I just flicked to um, the last page, one of the last pages of that magazine and it already announces 12th of August, Hamburg Ich Komme. Then the Hamburg issue will, is going to release, that is uh, next Wednesday, I think. And um, Hamburg has so much to offer. That's what I learned when I, we worked on that issue. And my colleague, who is also from Hamburg, told me so much about that place. It is always inspiring. And even if I've been there, I want to go there again. But uh, my idea as a little Hamburg web quest is just in the coming days or before you even get your hands on the Hamburg issue, think of Hamburg, find more information on that place and compile your own little Hamburg Spezial Deutsch Perfect issue. And in a little list, what would you write about when you expect a full magazine full of Hamburg? What is your experience? So I made a little example here, but it can also look very different. And you're not going to know what's uh, coming in that magazine. Of course, we have the must have, must see places in there, but we also have some very nice stories you might not expect. And there's so much to see on Hamburg. So just dive in to a little web quest on Hamburg, prepare for next month's issue and uh, share your uh, little um, compilation of Hamburg links, information, places, foods and people 
uh, everything you want to encounter there or at least read about in the Hamburg issue. With that being said, it's been very uh, nice for me to um, show you my ideas of how you can be interactive on the internet, make German your make the internet your German language theme park and make German the language you want to use on the internet, even if it's just for fun and for uh, stupid little memes. But hey, that's what we're doing online, right? So um, if you have some questions, just ask them. I have a um, colleague from Fintiba who's gathering those questions. You can also share some ideas in the chat if you want to and um, then I can answer to the questions. So uh, apart from that, I just want to point out some things, what you can do next. It's going to be more live streams. I'm happy about that. And the link for that uh, you can also find in the description box. Same thing for Fintiba services for international students or um, Corona related services, which they also have on their website. And we as Deutsch Perfect I'm very grateful um, that we have you as an audience and for all the Fintiba customers, we have a very special offer. You can test three issues Deutsch Perfect without risk and you can select them as a digital copy uh, once you click on that link and um, follow the steps there. So now I'm going to uh, switch to the chat and see um, if there are any questions. I'm curious what it is. Of course, you can also ask Fintiba specific questions to my colleague. That's something maybe uh, she can answer better than I can. So um, that has been solved already, I see. That's also good because that's um, usually um, university and getting to Germany related stuff. All right. So uh, for my part, I cannot see any questions. And um, still, I'm always happy that you are um, active with us, you are interested in what we have to offer. And uh, if any question, any issue comes up within um, the next days and weeks, you know that YouTube link, that video will going to be posted online. You can always find the comment uh, section and down there and then just ask your question in the comment section there or you can find us through our Instagram channels and the channels that Fintiba and Deutsch Perfect use. We also have Facebook. So in uh, many ways you can reach us. And uh, I'm happy if you continue studying German. If those learning tips help you to produce more language and improve your German. And eventually, if you make it to Germany, to see you here. Bye bye. Auf Wiedersehen.